All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Again, this is Steve Giordano from Photo Finale. We're going to be talking about the Color Flow system, uh, which is a portion or a piece of technology built into the Lab 50 product. Uh, Color Flow is not built into any of our other products, so if you're a user of Print 50, you won't be able to see similar functionality. You'll have to be using Lab 50. Uh, our intention is to eventually port it to Print 50, but it is not ready. It's not already there. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is a look at a virtual machine, and I'm looking at our virtual machine here that controls parts of our Prestige photo book product. Um, and this is the Lab 50 that manages the photo source uh, and IPI requests for Prestige photo books. Um, I'm going to go over how exactly we set this up and what we do to make sure that we're ensuring the best quality possible for photo books going forward. These same tools are things you can use inside your business to improve your quality. Everything we do here is not necessary to running production for color flow, but I'm going to show you our best practices, and you can apply any of those that apply to you. Okay, the first thing we did when we set up our color flow server here for Prestige Photo Books is we went to the D drive. Uh, you can see here we're on the D drive, and we set up a folder called Hot Folders. And then we had set up a four-stage process so that we could watch orders move through the production process and have a backup at each stage. This isn't necessarily necessary for all of you in your smaller environments. However, we wanted to make sure we had a backup copy of every order as it produced through the production stages, even if that production stage only lasted seconds. Okay. The first thing we did was we set up a Lab50 output. So this is the folder that Lab50 we'd be placing orders into. After Lab 50 is done placing the order, it will be picked up by a product called Dispatcher, and Dispatcher will then put it into Print Server. Print Server will then produce the product, uh, render it through Folio Server, and then drop it into our staging folder where it's QA'd by a human. After the human QA's it, they will put it into the fourth folder, which is the Send folder, and that will send it off via FTP and the Dispatcher product to the production lab that we have on the other side. Now, in your case, you could have this FTP into a folder that's picked up by your Naritsu, by your Fuji, by your Epson, whatever product you're using or printer you're using to print your product. Okay? So we have three main products we're going to look at as we set up this production. We're going to look at Lab 50, we're going to look at Dispatcher, and we're going to look at ColorFlow. So the first way we set this up and how we set this up to go is we go into Settings, okay? And we're going to go into um, order management. I'm oh, sorry, fulfillment. Okay. Under fulfillment, we're going to want all of our orders to be exported to the D colon hot folder one dot lab fifty underscore output. This is just our naming convention, and we do this so that even the the, the the untrained users or operators that come in here can see one two three four. So lab fifty is going to be outputting orders to that folder right there. From there. Um, and then we would then go into print server, and we're going to do our setup for our setup wizard. Okay. So print server, in this case, is going to be exporting everything through a hot folder interface. Okay. It's going to be exporting into the D colon hot folders 3.prestige, which is that third step in the process. It's going to use these variables, um, and it's going to use these settings. Create order subfolder true, order suffix dot order. That's a triggering system that dispatcher uses to know when to transmit, and we're going to go over that in a second. Okay. Um, copy of the XML file, you want that set to true. Uh, duplicate for quantity is false. So you can see these settings here, and you can go forward. And then what I do is I configure inside this particular hot folder what products we're producing in this way. Okay. So all of these products will be produced in the product rendering phase. Okay. So that's how you set up your printer server interface. I'm going to cancel that. And this is the folder you set right here that print server is monitoring. So Lab50 drops it into output. Dispatcher picks it up, puts it into print server. Print server picks it up, puts it into um, Prestige, and then it waits here. Okay. Notice at every point in time, it'll actually set up, because I've got the settings set up, it'll actually drop in a backup of every single folder into there. So every order is backed up into a backup folder. 
which you can see here. Every order we've ever done is in a backup folder. Now again, this requires a certain amount of space, which is why first we put on the D drive so that we can delete space. And then secondly, you want to make sure you clean up these folders because backups are not managed by Photo Finale. Okay, that's managed self by yourself. Okay. And that's what it looks like to set up the order structure. So orders will go through there. Okay. So let me show you ColorFlow at work and what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and reprint this photo book right here, which is an 8x8 photo book. I'm going to go ahead and print. And when I go to print, it'll then say, have an option down here for skip ColorFlow or go. So every order you have going through ColorFlow can be skipped at any point in time. So let's say you don't have a trained operator for color correction, or you just want them to grip it and rip it because you're too busy or certain products, some customer or photographer may say, look, I know what I'm doing in color correction, don't mess with my images. In that case, you can at, all, at any point just say skip color pro processing, and then it'll go through and it'll produce the product just as is normal. Okay. Now the way I have my setup set up, I have Lab 50 here, my folders here, I have Folio server here, so I can see that it's actually in production at all times. And then I have my dispatcher log right here that shows me what it's moving. So what you'll see is it's going to output these, as soon as it's done processing these orders, it's going to place it in the Lab 50 directory. It'll be here very, for a very short time. It'll then go to the print server and then finally end up in the order. It went so fast you didn't even see it. Okay. So now I have my order here. So this was a non-color corrected order, so I didn't go through color flow. But still, I want to make sure these orders are correct. So I will double click and I will have my operator go through and verify the book. And we're looking for errors. So for example, th is this an error in the format or is that an old photo that's been just not color corrected? And then what you'll do is you'll, what we do in Prestige is we would fail this book and then we would contact the customer if we can't discern that information on our own. Okay? So let's take a look at an order like that. So what we would do at Photo Finale is I would say, look, there's a red image there. I'm going to go ahead and put that as .err, leave the image there, and not send it into production. And now I know to take a look at it later. But let's take a look at a color flow order. So I want to take this photo book. Let's take a Bedford camera, an image photo book. They did a promo, which is interesting. You guys might want to talk to Steve Elkins if you know him about it. They offered a free prestige 6x6 book with every camera purchase, um, which was an interesting promo. And they're getting a lot of customers taking advantage of it. So we're going to go ahead and print this prestige photo book. And when I print, it'll then download the images. Um, and then it's going to submit it to a folder. And I'll show you how we set it up later. But briefly, what I'll do is I'll, once it's done, it'll say send this to color flow. So that's a new dialog. I'll say send to color flow. Now it's waiting for completion. I'll open up my color flow app, which happens to be the app and tech perfectly clear quick desk. You can use anything. You could use Photoshop. You could use um, a Naritsu um, PJP system. You could use a Fuji system. You can really use anything for color flow. You can use Paint, Microsoft Paint, as long as you follow the rules that I'm going to show you. So under App and Tech, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll pick up this order in color flow outbound. This is the order. Okay, for, for the color flow outbound for App and Tech, they have a setting set up so that I can have it all, all, all automated. So the source folder is the one I clicked on. I want to specify the output to the inbound folder, which is a different folder. And then I want it to delete the original. Okay, so it's going to clean up after itself when it's done. And now I'm going to go through and apply color corrections. So I defaulted to the details setting from Affentech. But I can also go through, as I'm done, I can be done with this. Looks good. Looks good. These are very artistic photos. But I can also use preset settings like fixed dark or fixed tint, depending on what works for Athentech, okay? And then you could choose the different um, types of corrections. But if you're using Photoshop, you can adjust it in levels. If you're using um, a Naritsu PJP system, you'll just correct your densities. Whatever you're using, the system doesn't care. So I'm going to go through, and now I've corrected all these, these images. I'm just going to go ahead and save all, because I'm going to trust the system, okay? Then once I'm done correcting all the images through the Athentech system or whatever system I had been using, I simply say done. I minimize it. And now you see it's going to detect, auto detect that it's complete. And then within seconds, it'll change over and it'll start rendering 
the JPEG. So there we go. Now it's processing. You can see Folio server that it's working. Okay. Now I'm anal retentive, so I like to see everything on the screen. So I have a huge monitor, and I can see everything on the screen. Some people don't necessarily like the way this is, uh, but I do. Once it's done producing, now I have the order. I can verify the order, the text. It's all looking good. Um, it's in a PDF format, which is expected for this product. Okay, it's all good, ready to go. Under this scenario, I would right-click on this, cut it, and then paste it in this folder, and then it will be picked up and sent to CCI. So the way that works is I just go like this, cut, paste, and then dispatcher will pick it up and send it. And I'll show you how to set up dispatcher in a second. Now, if you're using a direct-to-printer interface, meaning you're not sending to a wholesaler, or uh, a third-party FTP, all you would do is have this this folder right here be the hot folder for your Naritsu, the hot folder for your Xerox, or hot folder for whatever you're using. Um, and then you can go. But I like this method for color correction because it allows a certain amount of staging. It allows to have a human verify the quality. And in a lot of your environments, that actually can improve uh, the customer relationship and is really your uniqueness is the ability to look at it. Some of you may say, look, I'm going to trust it because it's 98% accurate. In that case, you can have this folder right here be your production folder and never do the, the human preview. That's up to you. For prestige photo books, we always have a human look at every photo book prior to its shipping. Some of you who use prestige know that you got a phone call from us talking about, um, about the images. So a question that just came up uh, from Rachel was, uh, the Naritsu color correction will change the rotation of all images to horizontal. Um, I don't, that may be true in some versions. I don't think that's for all versions, but uh, I think if you're using Naritsu to do your color correction, take a look at it and uh, verify. We, we can't tell you what Naritsu software does. We know that some of our customers use uh, Naritsu to do that. What we do prior to sending it to a Naritsu lab is we strip all the rotation data out of the, Im out of the images, so there's no rotation at all. So the only reason why it would rotate it is if it saw an X and Y axis was different and it rotated it. I don't know that it does that or doesn't do that, uh, but that's, um, that's on the Naritsu software. Uh, so you'll notice here Dispatcher just did something, and it actually transmitted that order, and now that order is gone, and that order will actually show up in the backup folder right here. Okay. So let's take a look at how we set that all up. So how do I set my system to do color flow? You simply go to Settings, okay, Photo Editing, Photo Processing, and then Photo Editing, right here. And then you want to enable the color flow process. By double click on Photo Books, this is the one I've already created. Okay. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to give it a name. You can have as many color flow channels as you'd like to have. You can have different channels for Photo Books and different channels for um, canvases and no channel for other things. So a product that's not defined will not go through color flow. Uh, products that are defined will go through color flow. So not everything has to be color flow. So in this case, prestige photo books are going to go through this. This is enabled. We're going to enable this. And we're going to delete the files after workflow completes. That means it's going to clean up that inbound directory that we talked about. Okay. You'll define where color flow is going to send the order. You're going to require the operator to interact with send jobs. Now that's a checkbox you don't have to be on. If you remember where the color flow system said send, it can just automatically send the stuff out without having a proactive send button hit if you deselect that button. I don't like that necessarily because I think if you're going to be doing a production environment where you're color correcting things, you want to have an operator paying attention to what's going on, especially if you're not doing it for every product. If you're just doing it for your specialty high-end products or maybe you have a line of photo books that are color corrected and a line of photo books that are not, you want to have this on. Um, you're going to copy the folder. You're going to create a subfolder, meaning the subfolder is going to be there. And you're going to mask the folder with a dot temp until complete. And that's basically a way to make our dispatcher be able to use, uh, be able to move orders around. Dispatcher will not move anything that's not a dot order. So every time an order is written, it starts with dot temp. When it's completed writing, it'll switch to a dot order. And then dispatcher or print server or any of our folio server will know to pick up that order and it's ready to go. So if you're using our system, you want to use those two. Okay? And then you don't need to create a job file unless you're automating some other third-party system. Now, Athentech does have third-party automation, and you can contact them about that. And if you don't know Athentech, you can look at their, one of our marketplace partners or contact Rachel and myself. 
and we'll help you with that. Okay, so the outbound, set the directory, create the subfolder, put a maskable.temp. Inbound means what am I monitoring? I'm monitoring this folder right here. Okay, and we want to wait until, what it'll do is it'll wait until it sees the final image with all the same names, and it'll wait 10 seconds after it sees the final image to make sure the data is transferred, and then it'll pick it back up. Very simple. Okay. Then you're going to choose what products you want it to fulfill. So for us, we're doing prestige photo books. So you can see here under photo books, we have photo books selected, and then we have our photo book products selected. I can add other products to it. Um, I can include all products, exclude products, um, or only include selected. So you could choose whichever method you want, similar to filter settings in Lab 50, how that works. So some people, I know some labs, one lab that's very popular with ColorFlow is they color correct every order that comes through the system through ColorFlow. In that case, they only have one channel, and it says include all products and product types. I have another customer who's very successful with this that only uh, color corrects collages, uh, canvases, metals, and books, and lets everything else grip and rip. And that's, again, your decision. You can have as many channels as you want. But you're going to want to use names that are relevant. So if you have more than one channel, it should be ColorFlow out underscore outbound underscore book, ColorFlow underscore outbound underscore poster. Use some sort of very easy and recognizable naming conventions so as your operators don't get confused. And then the sources tab, making sure that you know what type of orders are going to be color, color corrected. So you can make it so only mail order orders or pickup orders are color flowed. I don't know why anybody would do that. Those are features we have. Um, I would uh, I would say just go for it um, and have it for everything if you're going to do it. It's too hard to explain to the user. All right. So that's how you set it up. Give it a name. Where is it going? Where are you looking for it? What products are you doing? And you say, okay. It's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and take a look at another order. Now, why do you want to preview? Let me show you why you preview. And this isn't meant to disparage anybody. I did this on purpose. Um, well, no, I'm not going to do that. So let's take a look at another order. Let's take a look at uh, this order right here. All right. We're going to color flow it. It's going to download and go through. Now, what I would recommend is you download all orders automatically on your Lab 50. That's the setting. This generally does it, but I deleted all the images prior to coming. I simply hit send. The order is then now waiting. For me to color flow it, I would then go through, pick up the order in my outbound where I put it, use my default settings, and you can see these images are already pretty bad. Yikes. So there's not much you can do to that image. Close and save. A lot of times if somebody has a big image like this, it's showing the full size image, but not, it might not be used in full on the page. So while it looks a bit soft here, it might not be soft on the page. So that's why you need to preview afterwards. So you get the idea. You can change your settings here. You can adjust all sorts of information with your um, presets, including red eye and teeth whitening and face contouring and all that stuff. Uh, this is a really powerful tool. I'm going to go ahead and save all just for the sake of getting these done. Okay. Once I'm done, Lab 50 will recognize that I'm done. And it'll put it over into, uh, it'll start to the color flow. I can see Folio Server picked it up. Now it's starting to process. And again, I do, I set it up like this so I can just see things because I like to see progress. I hate wondering if it's doing something. Okay, once it's done, it'll then transfer it. Now I have my order. Now I can go through and verify. Okay, yeah, so this is a six by six book. So that blurry image is actually only a two inch thing on a six by six book. So it looks like it'll be okay. And then you can preview the book prior to rendering. And now I've got color corrected images where I've improved the quality of the image prior to the setting. So color flow is as simple as that. Does anybody have any questions? Fire them over to Rachel. This is a very short webinar, unless you guys have lots of questions. Okay, we're getting a couple of people saying that the Naritsu printer um, does rotate images automatically. I, w I 
I would say that you need to talk to your Noritsu guy or maybe amongst each other to figure out how to get around that. If Noritsu is rotating images, that will screw up our color flow. So you don't want to use that for your color correction. In that case, you want to use something like a Photoshop macro or some other system that does macro conversions like Athentech or I2E or, or um, something like that. Uh, we, we use at perfectly clear, at, at uh, Prestige Photobooks, we use the Athentech software unless customers opt out of it. So we do have some customers who opted out of color correction. If anybody hasn't set up a uh, dispatcher file, this is, is what it looks like. And I'll, let me take a look. I'll show you how easy dispatcher is to set up. So all this is is a folder where it monitors a dispatcher is a, something that runs from hardware attendant, monitors a folder, scans every one minute, and it puts a backup somewhere, okay? And then this just says where it sends it. So it just monitors a folder for orders and sends them. It can send it to a local file. It can send it to a UNC path on a local network, or it can send it to an FTP location. And if you send it to an FTP, you're going to want to use the connection settings right there. Okay? And then you want to use the dot order. This is how you would set up. And then this is how you would set it up for an FTP site. And that's dispatcher. Okay, you got a question coming in. Is there any way to rush shipping and production on prestige photo books? Um, yes, for there is a Rust option in Prestige Photo Books. Uh, however, that is a you need to call us and our support team to get verification that we can hit your SLA. It's not automated. So we had a customer yesterday call us in and say, "I need a book by the certain date." We had to make sure that we could hit that SLA. Once we got approval that we could hit the SLA, then we approved the rush order. So we do do rush orders on Prestige Photo Books. However, um, you need to call us and get a verbal. Um, check on that. It's not something that's automated, but no problem doing it. We did it all Christmas season for people. Um, uh, a note from Phil Cantor, uh, the wizard of uh, software. I mean, he always looks at every piece of software out there. He's saying that Athentech is the way to go. There's no fixing the Nuritsu. So according to Phil Cantor, use the Athentech software as we are here at uh, Prestige Photo Books. Does Lab 50 automatically come with Athentech? No. Athentech is a purchase piece of software. They're one of our marketplace partners and a really trusted partner. We've been working with them. I've been working with them personally since Brad started his company um, about 15 or 16 years ago, Brad Malcolm. Um, I know Phil Cantor is a big proponent of Athentech, um, and I'm sure there's an IPI forum somewhere for Athentech. If there's not, there should be. Somebody get on that. Um, <clears throat> but if you uh, want to get in touch with Athentech, just go on our marketplace page and there'll be an Athentech uh, phone number right on there. If you can't find that, notify our sales team. They'll be glad to put you in touch. Is it possible to use ColorFlow general prints in lieu of using the Fuji photo imaging controller setting? Yes, obviously. Yes, you can. So if you wanted to have everything go through a ColorFlow and use Athentech or some other tool to color correct, you could turn off all corrections on your Fuji and just send the rendered data right into the Fuji lab. Uh, and I believe that's a setting by channel in the Fuji. So yes, you can have all prints go through a color flow, verify that way, and then submit down to your Fuji. And a lot of the wholesale labs do do that, uh, where they use automated systems. Athentech has the version you just saw there, which is called QuickDesk, which is built for smaller labs, but they also have a Big Brother application that's much bigger. Somebody's asking for recommendation for color correction, one over another. It used to be that there were I, there were tools that I thought were better than the others for actual color correction, meaning they got the reds right and the blues right and so on and so forth. I think all the tools now do a pretty much a good job on that. One reason why I will, and I sound like a, this is a Athentech commercial, but it, it, one thing I do like about Athentech is they're doing some neat things around um, imaging that allows you to be more like a professional touch-up artist in some photos, such as the Beautify and other teeth whitening and other uh, other tools. So I, I do recommend Athentech. Take a look at it. I'm sure they have a trial version you can try. If not, uh, talk to other IPI members, members who have it. So if I had to pick, I would recommend Athentech. However, I have just as many labs who are just using Photoshop Actions uh, to do their correction. And you can just do this through Actions. So 
it's up to you. So the question is, can you use different color cor color correction software for books and another one for prints? Yes, no problem. So what you would do there, you would set up another channel, okay? And you're going to go to your um, color flow, and let's say I'm going to add a prints channel. So all you would do is you'd add a separate channel, okay? It'll outbound is going to go to underscore prints. Okay, using the same setting. Inbound, we monitor the, we're going to go um, just like that. And then we go products. And then you want to choose your print product. I don't think this catalog has print products, so I don't think there's, um, I can't really choose a print. But the idea would be to then go in here and let's just say you would choose these products right here. And now color flow would be active for those products. Now, when it goes into that prints directory, you would just use whatever tool is appropriate for that. So if it's automated, it'll monitor a folder. If it's manual, you'll know to go get it because of that send button. So when you get that send button, you'll know to go open up that tool. Um, now, one of the cool things I really can't show you over GoToMeeting is we actually use one of those wide, 42-inch wide monitors. So we have, um, we have the uh, Lab 50 right here, and then we'd have the Athentech open on the right-hand side, and then all my tools all the way over to the right. So actually you can see everything across one single monitor in real time and not have to switch back and forth between software. So one of those big long monitors are actually very helpful in these scenarios. So yes, you can have different color correction workflows by product and you can use different software for each product. Our system doesn't care. It just monitors for the changes. Okay, let me read this question real quick. So is there a way to offer an upsell on kiosks or websites to uh, correct 4x6s versus uncorrected 4x6s? Yes, there, there certainly is. Um, and I think I have a customer who does that. Let me show you what that looks like. I know they did it like two years ago. I don't know if they do it still. All right, give me a second. So, I'm, so you can see here they have products that are cor corrected, lab corrected prints at a certain price, and then they have self corrected prints at a different price. So if you wanted to go forward with this lab corrected versus self corrected prints, you could. I don't know that I would use those titles if you're dealing with consumers. This is more for a pro lab or somebody dealing with, uh, you know, quasi amateur photographies. Um, so you would want, but yes, if you wanted to have lab corrected prints versus self corrected prints, you can have different pricing. And what you would do in your in your color flow is you would just pick up you would just pick up the products that are self lab corrected in here and select them, and not select the self corrected. And that way you can have different pricing, and you could have um, the possibility for correction. Okay, so I'm, I'm reading a note. Phil, you should probably be leading this webinar. <laughs> so um, Phil is saying he, he would like to clarify that color flow uh, basically just allows us to have an in and out folder function and allow you to do color correction between the in and out. And that is what color flow does. It allows you to take an order prior to rendering and flattening with text and overlay and background and layout, correct the images, and then send them back to us for then ultimate flattening. So you could literally do anything with those images in between those stages. Um, you could replace them. You could do anything. So sometimes when we're fixing a book for somebody, we won't actually redo the project. We'll replace the file in the color flow directory to repair an order. So it gives you a lot of flexibility um, in order to uh, correct photo books, not just for color, but for other things as well. So 
So somebody's got a question, how do you create multiple versions of the same product um, but have lab corrected and self corrected versions? That is a good question and one for a different webinar. There's, it's actually quite easy to replicate a product um, and I will uh, make sure I do a webinar on that. In the meantime, if you want to create lab corrected versus self corrected prints, just contact our support team, they'll do it for you. And then that way you don't have to do it right now. Uh, but we'll do another webinar to go over how to duplicate products because uh, that seems to be a question that comes up quite a bit. Um, but if you look online in our catalog, most of the products already have lab corrected and self corrected print sections. So if you went into the uh, catalog management, there's a whole catalog called, um, let me go here. There's a whole catalog called for professional prints. So if you go under professional prints here, you will see most products have a cor corrected print, lab corrected print, or self corrected print nomenclature. And then you can also rename these. So if you wanted to call it a 24 by 24 Gickley watercolor, 24 by 24 Gickley lab corrected, you could do that and then link to that product in your catalog. So inside our prints, professional prints category is where you'll find everything that I just showed you in Snelson. So if you just wanted to replicate that, it's all right there and you can add those products. Very simple. Through the ColorFlow app, can we get render the output size of the file? I, for example, can we get a 15 to 30 byte megabyte for 4 by 6s? So actually through ColorFlow, before it goes through print server, you're getting the actual image that the customer uploaded. So if they uploaded a huge file, you're going to get the biggest file that we have available. If they uploaded a small one, you're going to get that file. So at the ColorFlow station where you saw Athentech, it's getting the original image uploaded at the resolution the customer uploaded for correction. So you have the most data to deal with at that point in time. For kiosk ordering, can you utilize the fulfillment options to have, have one for no color correction and one for color correction? Sure. The way you would do that is you'd go into your color flow workflow, you go into sources, and then you know you have the one, two, three fulfillments in kiosk. They're, they're really called express pickup and mail order, no matter what you actually call them. That's what they are in the background. And then you would say, I only correct mail orders, which would be the third fulfillment. And in that case, it won't try to uh, render the files uh, that come out of um, the kiosk. Okay, so it's as simple as that. You want to use a specific fulfillment within kiosk, you select what fulfillment you want to use. Same goes for um, web orders. You can have, you, you don't want, you only want to do pickup order, mail orders, you just want to go straight out. For whatever reason, that's what you want to do. So if you want, so if you wanted the optimized file for a 1200 by, for a four by six to be able to color correct with, can you do that? <clears throat> that is not possible before color flow. After color flow, it'll render out. You could make it so the print server resizes an order to a 300 DPI for each product, but at the color flow station, you get the actual file that we download. Um, we don't have the ability to scale that image coming in right now. Let's do another order. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and print an order just so you guys can see it work. Now remember, you don't have to use this method we use for order uh, for order folders. Um, we use this simply um, so we have a backup because we don't want customers to be able to ask a question we can't answer. So we track everything internally. Um, so we know exactly when everything was produced by our system, rendered out, sent to the wholesaler. Um, there's checks and balances everywhere. Okay, so sorry, I'm on a go to meeting here and 
communicating with a back-end server on the AWS cloud and talking to you guys. So it's a little slow. I'm going to go ahead and send these to ColorFlow. They're sitting there. I'm going to go into the outbound folder, pick that up. All right. And then I'm going to go through and color correct. So you can go ahead and do a fix dark, you know, beautify. They have different settings, fix tint. I am not a color guy, so I'm not going to pretend to know what to do to each one of these photos. I'm just going to uh, show you how it works. I'm going to go ahead and do save all. And again, you could color flow multiple products. So if I was in Lab 50 still, I could send another order to Lab to color flow and send another. You can do multiple orders simultaneously. You don't have to do it all one at a time. Does the export feature give you a full resolution file rendered with graphics? So right clicking and exporting a folder will export the order as it is and go through Folio Server. However, you don't get all the benefits of the actual rendering. To get an, an actual an accurate copy of an order, you need to use the print function, not the export. The export is meant to override certain printer specific settings that are in the print server. So I don't recommend using export anything other than uh, an emergency. Uh, I recommend printing everything. Um, export should be used only if something's going wrong with Folio Server or your printer. It should never be used on a daily basis. So this is the big book you can see. Let's see, it's nice that you have Folio Server running so you can see it what it's up to. And this will be a book with a cover. So you can see it's processing one of two. It'll render the cover. Once it's done, it'll place the order here. And now I can go through and I can see, you can see it improved, the, it changed that tint on that photo. But I, we like to do this because you can go through and you can then see, okay, what's the cover look like. When we're running production here, uh, the number one failure for all books is a cover that will not look right wrapped because uh, maybe the customer didn't quite understand how the wrap worked. Uh, so this one does look good. The customer set it up so the front and the back are fine. The text is good. We reject orders commonly if there's uh, something wrong with the cover um, in, the, in the process. And we rejected this one, for example. See, this book did not pass because that text is too close to the spine or to the, to the page, and that's going to be cropped with no matter what printer we use. So we notify the customer, would you like to resubmit that order so that the crop doesn't uh, go off the screen and the customer is remaking that photo book now. So that's another reason why previewing your books are great is a great idea. I recommend it, um, preview every order, especially expensive orders. Uh, for that was a $400 order. They're ordering 36 copies of that book. Um, I'm going to delete that order again because we're not, we're still live production server. <clears throat> so does anybody have any other questions? So I highly recommend, oh, why wouldn't they see that text? So as you know, when you, with the 6x6 six six soft prestige cover book, um, the printer requires about a quarter inch bleed. If that those that text was too close to the edge, there's no printer that will not that will be able to make that. So our staff noticed that it would it would be cut off, and they rejected the book to notify the customer to remake. And then all they need to do really is open up a photo finale, move the text over to the right, and then go. Our support team will give you the option of having us do it or having the consumer do it. Um, but for you, you need to do the same thing before you print. Make sure something is going to print appropriately. It's like when you print a canvas wrap for somebody. You want to make sure you're not wrapping somebody's nose. You want to make sure you're wrapping the, 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 the side that doesn't matter. Same thing you want to do for photo books. So um, that's just a training. In the upcoming version that's coming out uh, later this month, we'll have safe zone and danger zone features for all creative products. So the customer will see where the crop marks will be based on every product prior to them submitting the order. And hopefully that will cut down on our QA staff having to, having to catch that type of thing. So the uh, safe zone upcom safe zone is coming and should be available very shortly. Um.
Um, I would say by the end of the month, you'll have safe zone danger zone, as well as some other really cool features. Any other questions? I'll give Rachel a second to type, to see if she's got any, any more questions. So I recommend ColorFlow. Um, it works very similar if you haven't set up. Um, I, we did a, we already did a webinar, and you can look through the, the system on the other features, which is folio branding and um, folio rendering. It, it, ColorFlow works very similar, where you can add channels to be able to apply rendering and branding to products. Uh, branding will be some, something, for example, adding your logo to the back of every 5x7 folded card. Uh, rendering would be for resizing a product, product, meaning you're repurposing a product you want scaling. Um, folio rendering will do that. If you don't know what those are, you can go through it, through our, our videos and look at those, or you can request we do another webinar. Okay, so so if uh, colorful is very similar to our existing um, uh, colorful is very existing to to folio rendering and folio branding. branding. Um, yes, Print50 does not work with ColorFlow, only Lab50. Uh, and that will change, uh, but to, for, for today, if you're using uh, Lab50, um, you can use ColorFlow. Print50, you would need to run Lab50 separately in order to get ColorFlow functionality. Yes, we we did record this session, as boring as it is, uh, and we will put it up on our YouTube channel so you can go back and review it, and you can see how to set up things, and you can see our best practices for how to set up a Lab 50 machine. Um, again, you don't have to do everything we did with the with the with the folders and all that stuff, but I do recommend it if you want to be able to keep track of what you have done uh, and look at orders. So I had a question from somebody, can you run Lab50 and Print50 at the same time? You can't run it at the same time, but you can run it on the same machine. So if you're running Print50, you could close Print50, launch Lab50, and then do your color float objects, and then you, and vice versa. Um, or you could run them on separate machines. Normally, I would say if you're only color flowing certain products, like books and canvases, I would get a second Lab50 to be able to manage that production. You're going to be much more organized that way, um, and you're going to have a better experience for your operators. Uh, and uh, that, that, as, as a best case, that's what I would do. Okay. So one more second to see if there's any uh, any other orders or any other questions. And then I'll thank you for your time, and happy Friday. Enjoy Martin Luther King weekend, and um, enjoy color flow. If you have any questions, reach out to Rachel or myself, or directly to our support team. We'd be happy to help you. And um, if you have any other questions that we can't answer, call Phil. He's an expert. <laughs> okay, guys. Have a great day, and we appreciate your support.